Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous two videos, we discussed a lot of detail on the intercostal spaces, blood supply, nerve supply, and then also the three major intercostal muscles. So now we're going to pick up with this group of muscles, which are called the subcostales or subcostal muscles. These are a set of thin muscular slips that extend from the angle of one rib on its internal surface to the internal surface of a rib below. And really, it's going to be two ribs below, and so they're going to cross two intercostal spaces. Okay? Um, if we actually zoom in down here, we'll actually see uh, the subcostal muscles. So here's one subcostal muscle right here. It's a little bit low resolution, but hopefully you can see that it has one attachment down here on this particular floating rib. Uh, this is actually rib number 12, and if we follow the fibers upward, we see that it actually has a superior attachment on this rib, which should actually be rib number 10. So hopefully that makes sense. We can see a bunch of subcostal muscles actually down here. So there are a bunch of muscular slips. So they cross two intercostal spaces, and as a result of that, their origin and insertion are going to be two ribs generally apart. Now if we look at the origin of the subcostal muscles, the origin is actually going to be the inferior surface of some of the lower ribs near the rib angle. So the rib angle is the part of the rib that's closer to the posterior attachment on the vertebra. Um, so if we actually zoom in here, the origin is actually going to be, if we look at this particular subcostal muscle, the origin is actually going to be on the rib above. It's actually a superior attachment. And then the insertion is going to be the superior border of a rib generally two levels below. So this right here would be rib number 10, two levels below uh, rib number 12. Now don't think of the action in terms of the insertion being pulled toward the origin because if the origin's up here on rib 10 and the insertion's down here, that would tend to make you think that the insertion is being pulled upward, and that would tend to make you think that it would elevate the ribs, and it's actually the opposite. The action has more to do with the direction that the fibers run, and it turns out that the fibers of the subcostales actually run in the same direction as the internal intercostal muscles. And remember, the internal intercostal muscles were rib depressors and they're going to aid in forced exhalation or expiration. And so the subcostal's action is going to be to depress the ribs. They're going to assist in that, in particular during forced exhalation or expiration. Okay? And their innervation is via intercostal nerves. You can say the same thing about the arteries and veins, intercostal artery and vein, at that particular level. The fifth muscle we're going to look at is the transversus thoracis muscle. And to really see this, we have to cut open uh, the anterior chest wall and look at the posterior aspect of the sternum. And so these muscular slips right here, there's usually four or five of them, these are actually the transverse thoracis muscles. So usually four or five muscular slips that arise from the xiphoid process down here on the sternum and then also mostly on the sternal body. Okay? Usually the fourth or fifth transversus thoracis muscular slip is on the xiphoid process. All the others are going to arise from the sternum. And the muscle is going to span superiorly and laterally to the second through the sixth costal cartilage. So if we look here, this would be rib number one. And here's ribs two, three, four, five, and six. And what we see is that the origin of each one of these slips is going to be some part of the posterior inferior sternum. So if we divide the sternum in a top half and a bottom half, these origins are really on the inferior half of the sternum. They're going to originate posteriorly. That's why we have to actually take off this anterior chest wall and look at the back side of the sternum. And then the fibers, again, run superiorly and laterally to the costal cartilage, as you, as you can see right here, of ribs 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Uh, these muscles are going to be synergistic with the subcostales, or subcostal muscles, in the sense that they're going to depress the ribs, or at least assist in that. And that's going to come to play when you have forced or active exhalation or expiration. Now notice, the transversus thoracis muscles do not span the entire rib cage, so their innervation is only going to be through the intercostal nerves from T2 to T6, 
which makes sense because that's really where they're attaching superiorly is the costal cartilages of ribs two through six. And we can say the same thing about the blood supply. The blood supply would be due to the intercostal artery and veins in the intercostal spaces two through six. So hopefully that makes sense. We can take another look at the transversus thoracis muscle in this view. Again, what they've done here is they've pulled off the anterior chest wall. Here's the sternum. We can actually see its posterior aspect. Up here we have the manubrium of the sternum. Here's the body of the sternum, and down here would be the xiphoid process. What we see over here is we see the muscular slips of the transversus thoracis muscle. Okay? So here's actually the second slip. The first one's been removed on the right side. Over here, uh, this is actually the first slip on the patient's left side. So here's one, two, three, four. There would be one right here on the right side, one, two, three, and then we have four and five right here. So those are the transversus thoracis muscles. And again, you can see that they originate on the lower half of the sternum down to the xiphoid, and then they rise superiorly and laterally and insert on the costal cartilages of ribs two through six. Again, this particular slip's gone, but it would insert more on the second rib up here. The sixth muscle right here, levatoris costarum, we actually can't see it in this view, so we're going to switch images. So levatoris costarum is a series of 12 fan-shaped muscles that lie in between the ribs, basically, and they're sometimes considered a part of the transversospinalis muscle group. Recall from the deep muscles of the back that there was a group of muscles that fell under transversospinalis. And generally they're considered the semispinalis, multifidus, and rotatoris. Some sources will throw this in with them, and that's because these muscles arise from the transverse processes of C7 all the way down to T11. So the fibers project inferiorly and laterally to insert on the ribs. So if we actually zoom in and take a look at some of these, oops, we see that they originate over here on the transverse process of the vertebra, and then they project downward and laterally, and they insert on the ribs. Okay? So their origin is on the C7 through, that should actually be T11, transverse processes. And their insertion is going to be on the superior surface of the rib below. And their action is going to be to elevate the ribs, which makes sense because their name is levatories. They levitate the ribs or they elevate them. Now again, they're not going to be the prime movers of this. The prime mover of elevating the ribs is usually going to be considered the external intercostal muscles, uh, which are going to be active during passive or a quiet inhalation. But if we have to do active or forced inhalation, which would be during exercise, let's say, then the levatories costarum may become active and help elevate the ribs. And the innervation of levatories costarum is going to be the intercostal nerves from T1 down to T11, and then also from C8 for the most superior of these muscles. Okay? The last two muscles that we're going to look at are what we call the serratus posterior muscles. The one up here is serratus posterior superior. And what we can see about it is that its origin is actually going to be on the spine, really on parts of the nuchal ligament, or ligamentum nuchae, which is not visible here, and then the spinous processes of C7 down through T3. You can actually see those right here. If we look at this muscle, we can actually see that the medial part of it, the part of it near the origin, is actually all tendinous. And if you actually look at a cadaver for this, it's a very, very thin, fine tendon. Not muscular at all in this area. The muscular part is going to be the lateral part, and that's where the insertion is. This muscle is going to project laterally and inferiorly and insert on the upper borders of ribs 2 through 5. And so when this muscle contracts, it's going to pull the insertion toward the origin, and it's going to act to elevate ribs 2 through 5. And the innervation of this muscle is going to be through the primary ventral rami of T2 through T5, and that's really because it inserts on ribs 2 through 5. Now, this muscle down here at the bottom, this is serratus posterior inferior, and it's going to be very, very similar to this muscle up here, except the fibers, when they run superiorly, they run laterally. Its origin is going to be on the T11 through L2 spinous processes. So we've got down here L2, L1, T12, and T11. 
those are the origins. The fibers project laterally and superiorly, and they insert on the inferior borders of ribs 9 through 12. Rib 9, 10, 11, and 12. And so if you imagine the insertion being pulled toward the origin, downward, the action of this muscle is going to be to depress ribs 9 through 12. So while the serratus posterior superior will more or less assist in inhalation, like the levatoris costara, serratus posterior inferior will assist in exhalation. However, all three of these muscles will only be active when that ventilation is active or forced. Okay. Now, if we look at serratus posterior inferior, just like its superior counterpart, the origin part of this muscle is very membranous or tendinous. Okay? The muscular part is only laterally. Okay? And the innervation of the muscular parts is going to be through the T9 through T12 primary ventral rami. Um, and that makes sense because the muscular part's very near because of its insertion on ribs 9, 10, 11, and 12. We can take another look at those muscles right here. Again, on the top here, serratus posterior superior. We can see its origin here on the uh, spinous processes of C7 down through T3, although there would be a little bit of an origin on the ligamentum nuchi up here, which is not visible. Again, the fibers project laterally and inferiorly to insert on ribs two through five, that is the upper borders of those ribs. And so contraction would elevate those ribs and assist in forced inhalation. Conversely, serratus posterior inferior has its origins on the spinous processes of T11 down through L2. The fibers project superiorly and laterally to insert on ribs 9 through 12. And so when this muscle contracts, it pulls these ribs down. And so that's going to act to depress those ribs and aid in forced exhalation. Okay. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of some of the muscles of the thoracic wall. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.